So the first talk uh, from myself includes two parts. Uh, the first, uh, the first part, I would love to give you guys the background story, which actually um, how we start this uh, prototype and uh, from our early conversation. Um, the second part focuses on the implement implementation details a little bit more, uh, give you guys more idea uh, what we have achieved so far. So the first part, hopefully after the first part, we can give you guys a more uh, a big picture or overview in terms of what we eventually want to achieve, um, apart from the index calling itself. Um, so, so basically, the index calling um, is actually is um, is, uh, is one of the uh, topics we we have we have we have discussed from an early conversation related to the multi uh, MDI multi join direct or SQL indirect nowadays in the uh, D3D API design. Um, uh, this uh, from early conversation, you know, driven by a few uh, by a few guys here, uh, like including Alex and Blake and a few guys from studio uh, partners. Um, so, at a high level, obviously, as many of you guys know, uh, multi join interact or execute interact make it possible to completely defer the workload to the GPU side to, 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 to decide and actually batch them or group them in in, a, in whichever way the developer uh, 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 favor, right? Um, uh, that. At a high level, obviously, that gives you two uh, major benefits. The first one is actually significantly reduce the CPU overhead because that can batch the or group your multiple draw calls uh, into a single API call and reduce your um, uh, your CPU overhead. This, uh, the second is that by combining that with um, uh, with the descript table, um, well, dynamic indexing of your descript table and also our synchronous GPU calling, and that gives you so give, that can potentially give you. Uh, give you further, you know, GPU performance uh, improvement. Like, you know, uh, like for example, uh, if you you can calling out all the uh, invisible triangles, right, at a, at a very very finer uh, granularity. That's actually part of our index calling. We call that part uh, as an index calling. The second part, we can also further uh, when we generate the in, we will, when we fill the indirect argument draw argument buffer, we can further calling out. The invalid draw calls, which actually refers to the draw call without any uh, 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 visible triangles associated with. Um, so in this talk, we're going to obviously focus on index calling uh, uh, itself um, as a prototype, and obviously on console platform, you're, you have uh, even more flexibility in terms of the uh, uh, the indirect argument buffer or command buffer you can execute from, right? And that's the details related to pl uh, console platform. Okay, so um, so as I just briefly mentioned, that's the that's the overall big picture in terms of what we eventually want to achieve by doing a, a, a serial of uh, a prototype, including the the current index calling prototype. Uh, so the key, there are two key things. Right, the first one obviously is actually the interact API itself is uh, is kind of like a replacement or enhancement of the concept of the interact draw call or dispatch call. Uh, you can obviously issue issue multiple draw calls within a single API. That's the whole point, I guess. You know, from the uh, from the very beginning, and the uh, on on the PC on the in the current PC D three D twelve specification, also you are allowed to switch in your vector buffer, index buffer, root constants, and also some you know descriptors. Um, so for the for the first Intel for the very um, for a very uh, uh, um, a straightforward uh, inter SQL inter demo, you can refer to uh, the GDC talk. Uh, I've I've copy pasted the link here, and also uh, I copy pasted the diagram from the uh, documentation to show you a very simple layout of your inter uh, argument buffer to give you a, a basic idea. If in case you're you haven't started use them, um, so I think I think the whole thing, as I mentioned, we are. Um, the conversation is actually started from, started from a few uh, very interesting use cases. One of the main use cases um, in the early conversation uh, between us, like Alex and Blake, these guys, and, and Jim, was uh, um, one of our studio titles actually targets a very high number of job calls, and also they're very keen to, to achieve a very aggressive GPU calling efficiency. Uh, we did consider the job bundle in the very beginning as a, as a, as a possible alternative. But obviously, the main challenge here is actually um, is the is the color efficiency. Uh, basically, you know, uh, like for example, in UE4, your uh, your your draw call batch uh, uh, list is is not necessary not necessary to be a spatial coherent, such that if you group things into the into into spatial spatial way, like for example, uh, um, um, 
that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have a very very good cutting efficiency. You may end up with like the a large portion of the of the draw cost in that in that bundle actually doesn't co uh, contribute to the uh, doesn't contribute to the screen pixels uh, at all. So so this title are very uh, is very uh, keen to 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 well there are basically there are three interesting main use patterns or use cases uh, use patterns in in this title. The first one there. Are, they're planning to do some sort of material layer merging. They call that in this way. Uh, basically, for me, it's kind of like a you know, material template merging. It's kind of like you know, for each shader combination, you want to actually merge uh, all the draw cores are sharing the same shader combination to reduce the state switching as possible as you can. Uh, the second one they call uh, RHI. By the way, is actually is the 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 API gra the graphics API wrapper uh, cross platform graphics API wrapper in the UE4. Uh, essentially, the second use pattern, the RHA package sequ uh, sequence caching, is a is a really reuse of the user level command buffer. It's kind of like draw bundle at a high level, but without the pre uh, compile uh, uh, com without the pre, -com -re -com uh, pre -re compiling them. And um, the the third use pattern is actually is uh, they call the, the title. Or this, uh, the developer calls it the render group proxies. Essentially, it's a collection uh, or grouping the nearby meshes in an even even bigger draw batch. So, I think you know the whole these three major uh, main use patterns obviously you know have been heavily used to drive the early conversations about the API design. And uh, obviously, you know there are two major areas areas we focused in our conversation about this you know uh, thing. The first. Um, the first main area we focused on was how we can achieve this um, or effectively achieve these um, uh, three use patterns, especially the the first one, the uh, the material layer merging, by by using the execute interactive by combining with this, uh, uh, dynamic index dynamic indexing descript table in HSL you know 5.1, uh, and the second major area is that how can we uh, how can we provide a a a much more aggressive GPU calling uh, efficiency. So, so obviously, um, as a first step, we address the the cutting efficiency. Um, so there are also there are also many other potential use cases uh, 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 mentioned as well. You know, by having this completely new API, execute interact, very powerful API that obviously opens a lot of you know interesting and new uh, use scenarios. You can actually start think of um, these use cases may not necessarily be. Uh, the a straightforward application for your title. I mentioned them here just for your interest. If you want to do some R and D yourself, the first one, uh, there are two of my uh, favorite use cases at this point was uh, our uh, GPU scanning with a sync compute and then also the tile-based lighting or rendering, whatever you call it. Um, obviously, right now many people are actually using a sync compute to 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 scan the uh, um, like 100 characters, right? You actually you normally uh, from a sync compute context, you issue a single dispatch to scan each of character, and but obviously you know when you have a 100 or 200 char uh, scan characters, um, you you know you may end up with many of them actually doesn't cut or not are not visible at all. So by by using execute interact and use the, and then defer the determination of the which part which subset of these characters are visible for your screen uh, to the on the GPU that'll be great such that you can actually only scan the visible uh, uh, characters to save your GPU performance. And the se the second one is actually is very interesting. Uh, I'm sure you know some um, some some people here like James. Uh, is going to having much more deeper uh, experience about it, you know. But for me, at a high level, I think um, uh, if you actually, you know, right now the screen based processing, if you divide the screen into like eight by eight tiles or uh, whatever size you favor, and uh, you can do many interesting things uh, in a multi-threaded way. But uh, eventually, we can group these tiles, small tiles, into uh, a, a, s a small number of uh, bigger groups based on their shading path or 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 a feature uh, 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 they're trying to implement, and uh, and 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 then issue a, um, a, a separate uh, dis interactive dispatch call for each group. I think that's going to be uh, very interesting to see what performance is going to be. Um, okay, so uh, before I finish the first uh, part here, I copy paste a very uh, uh, a simple pseudocode to compare what a normal draw loop uh, looks like, and also. Um, a much more compact equivalent code path by using execute interact looks like. So obviously, on the right side, a single execute interact draw call can replace the you know the uh, uh, the, the traditional draw loop on the left side. 
Okay, so that's the first part. Hopefully, you know, by the first part, you will actually, you guys have a, a, a very a big picture of understanding how we eventually want to achieve um, in this uh, set of uh, uh, prototypes. Um, so right now, the current status of our prototype, uh, we have finished the GPU calling for all draw calls. Essentially, is that for each draw call, the triangles or the geometry, so geometry associated with that draw call, we we have done uh, 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 both course level and actually fine uh, fine level of, of the calling. Uh, we haven't started to 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 calling out of the draw call itself here. Um, we also haven't started to do the, all the tricky by using the draw ID to the dynamic indexing to describe the table in the, um, uh, uh, yet. Okay, so the second part is about index calling itself, as I quickly mentioned. So the index calling itself is basically trying to reduce um, or calling out all the invisible triangles as possible you can by using a sync compute, synchronize um, in parallel running with your draw, uh, with your draw sequence uh, on GPU. So, so I'm using a single slide to, describe, uh, to show you guys what we have done. We're pro we have implemented the traditional thrustum calling. Obviously, zero row triangle calling is configurable. You can actually pass a threshold value to determine how small the uh, the screen size is going to be, and also depth face calling and uh, depth and also depth calling. So depth face calling is actually, from my perspective, is something I'm uh, I'm actually very looking forward to see what the final result is going to be because it's, because simply because 50% of the triangles are back face should be calling out on the GPU side. Um, if you're so basically by by having this you know significant significantly improve the G, uh, GPU calling efficiency that can help your title in, a lot and GPU wise in particular when your GPU when you suffer a lot from your vertex vertex throughput on your GPU side. Um, so here is actually is a quick in you know, a result comparison. Um, when, turn, when we turn on the index calling and turn the index calling off in the UE4 benchmark uh, uh, shoot again, uh, this may not be the best benchmark we, we should use, but we just you know quickly show you some early result. So far, the uh, the uh, takeaway we can give you in our very early you know uh, experiments is that depth calling gives us very um, a good win, uh, although we can't just simply reuse the previous frame step buffer to do the uh, depth calling. Um, and also, we only apply that to our depth pre-pass uh, uh, as, as an experiment. So next, I'm going to show you how we implement it. So in terms of the index calling shader flow, so there are two uh, stages. Uh, the first one is actually we call it as a, as, a, uh, as a initialization stage, which essentially is that for each draw call, we, we, we essentially what we've done in the initialization stage, we we evenly divide your triangle set into a, like let's say each group we have a, each work item we have a one to eight triangles. We essentially divide them uh, into a into a set of small groups to actually pro, to, to achieve a better you know balance of the workload. Um, um, the second part, once we generate this workload and then we actually we pass this each work items into the uh, in, uh, into the second index calling the real index calling stage, and then we calling out all the invisible triangles. By you know doing the, fr the frustum calling or backface calling, etc., and uh, our current and then obviously the next the final result is actually is quite uh, 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 straightforward. Obviously, you generate a new index buffer which only um, only refers to the triangles you um, 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 that survive from the calling process. So this gives you very uh, um, uh, very good you know uh, uh, calling efficiency. Um, So that's the basic idea. I mean, it shows you what we want to achieve in terms of what uh, in this calling. So obviously, by doing this in this calling, and then what the hope is that you, for many of draw calls, you eventually have a much smaller set of triangles you need to uh, you need to you need to set up basically on the GPU side, and that uh, gives you some performance win. Um, because this this representation start from tomorrow, uh, today will be start, will be recorded, so it's very important to actually mention the uh, the credits. Um, so uh, the original prototype is actually from Alex um, and also Chris and Charles. Uh, although I've been driving the uh, whole work, but obviously it's Chris and uh, Charles are doing the um, the porting to the UE4 um, uh, benchmark and the code base. Uh, 